Hello everyone, it's me, Laura, and I'm in a, a weirder chair today, so I'm kind of like not, I have to slouch so that I fit into frame. But that's not important, because what is important is what you're going to read this fall. Now, fall is coming. It's not here, because when I'm recording this, it's like 80 degrees, but it's coming. And part of the fun things about fall is that we start having cozy things like sweaters. Sweaters are cozy. And I like caramel apple spice or caramel apple cider from either Starbucks or Modox respectively instead of a pumpkin spice thing. But you know, to each their own. Have some pumpkin spice. Live your dreams. But I like in addition to all of those things, cozy books or creepy books. Now, today we're going to focus on uh, mostly creepy books. What can I say? But we do have some paranormal in there because I think of paranormal books as cozy books because you can sit down with a long series and just live your best life. There's nothing quite like finding a series that has like at least three to four books in it where you can just sit and read all of them back to back and not answer your phone or leave your house or prepare meals. Um, and you just sit down with your emotional support bag of peanut butter M&Ms and oh wait, that's just me. It's just me. Okay. So let's talk about some creepiness. Here's a nice creepy book. Okay, this book is called The Perfect Place to Die, and it is about Zaretta, who is heading to the Chicago's World's Fair, which, of course, was in Chicago, 1890s. Really cool time in history. Read The Devil in the White City if you want to learn more about it. And she is about to run into one of America's most notorious serial killers. I bet she didn't know it. You know, because it, it says so on the back. Um, but anyway, her younger sister has left home, come to Chicago, gotten a job, and then vanished. So Zaretta is like, I'm gonna find you. So she goes to Chicago to find her sister and maybe her death. See, skeleton? You're gonna have to find out. So this is historical horror based on real events. Very good book. Another creeptastic book. Oh, the Taking of Jake Livingston. The cover on this one, you can see the reflection of my filming setup, is creepy. Jake is a medium. He is trying to fit in in his super, super preppy school while he is uh, dealing with a ghost. A ghost that wants to take him, basically. Um, this guy is, is a vengeful ghost now. He was a school shooter. His name was Sawyer. And now he is like, let me live where you live. So if you like spooky books about people maybe being taken over by ghosts, for you. If you like preppy boarding school type books, for you. If you like books that are scary, for you. Anyway, this one I have not read yet, but uh, I think the idea sounds really cool. This one I have read. There's someone inside your house. This is coming to Netflix. There's a release date in October that has already been posted. I will put it here. Look at that. And either I was right about October or I was wrong, but I'm assuming October. So Makani has come to live with her grandmother after something horrible happened at her school. You will find out what the horrible thing was, but she has come from Hawaii to live with her grandmother in Nebraska. And then one by one, students at her new school start to die. So everybody is freaking out. <clears throat> Who's gonna be next? Is it gonna be Makani? Is Makani the one doing it? What is Makani's secret? Is everything terrible? When will you stop screaming? 
I don't have the answers to any of these things. But this book's by Stephanie Perkins. She wrote a bunch of rom-coms that I really love. Um, Anna and the French Kiss is one of them. Um, you will you will love this one. And then you can watch the Netflix show when it's out. Okay, we're gonna pivot. Like, let's say those are too horrifying for you. That's okay. I have something that is wholesome for you. And it is called Pumpkin Heads. And it is by Rainbow Rowell. And it is illustrated by Faith Erin Hicks. And it is wholesome and it is beautiful. And it is about two seniors who are working their last night at the pumpkin patch before they head off to life beyond. And one of them's really straight laced and one of them is, you know, living her best life. And they all go around doing all their favorite things at this pumpkin patch before it is too late. And I'm gonna see if I can find the most delicious thing that they have. It is pumpkin pie. It is dipped in deliciousness and chocolate. And I don't know if it is here or not. Pumpkin bombs, but see they're sold out. See, Deja has her pumpkin bomb. If you want to learn how to make a pumpkin bomb, you can actually look online and people have recreated the pumpkin bomb. My favorite character in this is Todd. He's a dude that just walks around fully wearing a jack lantern on his head. So if you want a little bit of love story, a little bit of best friend story, a little bit of eat everything you can at a fair before it's too late and you have to leave story, pumpkin heads is for you. The art is great, the story is great. And uh, there's even a map of the pumpkin patch. I wish that I could visit a pumpkin patch that had this much food, is all I'm saying, because I don't really care about the pumpkin unless I'm eating it. Okay, now, if you are also like me and your cozy reads are a long paranormal series, um, I have some suggestions for you. Some of them you may have read, some of them you may not have. This is the one I think you probably have read, but if you haven't, you gotta get on that. City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. If you have not read her Shadowhunters books, you gotta fix that, you gotta get on that. Um, in this one, Clary's mom vanishes, and Clary's like, why is this happening to me? And she finds out that she is not just some average girl, because why would she be? She's been having her memory wiped and she's actually a shadow hunter. And of course, there is a cool, quirky, hilarious best friend. There is um, a love interest experience. And there is the best quote that I have fully ever seen in my life. And it is, uh, it is shadow hunters looking better in black than the widows of our enemies since 1213 in this book. I would have that quote on my shirt. So shadow hunters are basically Nephilim, part angel, part human, that were chosen by the angel Raziel, Raziel to kill demons hard, kill them stabby stabby. They can um, use a stele or stele. I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that. Let me know if you know to draw marks on their skin, angelic marks that say like, I can see in the dark, I can run super fast. And then they go out and like kick things in the face. So Clary meets up with some shadow hunters and they go kick things in the face. Um, one of those things they hope is Valentine who is gathering forces and being super evil, so. Read these if you haven't. If you don't want a contemporary setting, read Clockwork Angel first. That is set in the 1800s and has um, Tessa Gray, who has come from America to the UK and then gets kidnapped and then things ensue. So read these if you haven't. Audiobooks are great. Um, anyway, be a nerd with me, it's fun. The Diviners by Libba Bray. Libba Bray, can I speak? These are set in the 20s. And we got we got some more spooky, spooky happenings happening. Um, 
Evie has left her hometown. She has come to New York City and she is uh, gonna live with her uncle, except her uncle is like really into the occult. And she's like, I wanna go to parties. Why am I standing here in your creepy museum? So she's a little concerned because he's like, yes, let's do occult things. And she's like, yeah, I'm kind of a little bit psychic, but shh, don't tell anyone. Um, and so in the, at the same moment, there's a murderer in New York City and Evie and people like her might be able to help solve this or they might be his next victim or hers. I couldn't tell you. It's been like 11 years since I've read this book, but yes, The Diviners. This series just ended. It had been, I think the first book came out in 2012. So Liv has been working real hard. They're all chunks like that. And uh, now finally we have the conclusion. So I'm gonna reread this and then read the last one in the series. I'm gonna read them again so that I know what happens. And that's gonna be my fall call, cozy read. So I highly recommend that you jump in here. Um, I'm gonna read mine in ebook. So this will be on the shelf waiting for you to read this fall cozy book. So now that I've tried to make sense, we're gonna wrap this up and I hope everybody has a great fall. I hope you get all the treats you like. I hope you have caramel apples and apple dumplings. And I hope that you eat pumpkin things and get as many spiced lattes of whatever kind that you want. Um, and I hope you read some good books. And I will see you next time, or rather you will see my hands next time while we craft some things. Bye.